Hey gang, this is Jim, and uh, coming with you today with a uh, fix it for your average street machine. Now every car is going to be a little bit different. Uh, this is my daily driver, and it's a 2011 Chevy Malibu. And what I'm showing you here is how to change the blower motor on this bad boy. Uh, mine's been making some noise, and I kind of been letting that go. And then uh, we jumped in the other day, and wouldn't you know, uh, it died. So uh, went ahead and bought one of these jobs here. It's an aftermarket replacement. And uh, I'm going to show you how to change that. Uh, the first step, of course, well lit is always a good idea. Get the seat back as far as you can. Uh, you got to get this cover pulled down. And you can look and see I've already started to pull it loose. It's just these little spring clips. So just pull on it and the whole thing will come out. you got to pull the front and the back. You can see there's one in the back. And then also there's a little clip there. And that's for the wiring harness. So you're going to pull that loose. Once the cover comes down, just pull that out. It's just one of those little trees. And there you go. Okay, so now right here is the blower motor. And what we're going to do, of course, we're going to disconnect the wiring harness. But then up around the top here, we're going to have to get into something a little bit trickier. So I'll show you that here in just a second. Okay, so what I did here is I've got the wiring harness popped loose. Boom, pop that out. And now if you look up here around the top, you'll see a seam. There's a seam that runs all the way around here. And this is so screwy, but this is how they do it. It's actually, the motor housing is actually molded into the plastic uh, just because it's cheaper to do it that way. But when you got to change it, uh, they sell it with a bracket that will allow you to, you got to cut this out and then reattach it with the bracket. So what you're actually going to do is take your knife and work it right into the seam right here and push that puppy up in there. And then you got to cut your way around, all the way around this thing. And I'm going to try and hold this and cut at the same time. Alright. And you're going to work your way around this whole seam, all the way around the motor. Obviously keep your wiring out of the way when you're doing this. But you're going to cut all the way around there, and then this whole thing just drops right out. And I'll show you that here in just a second after I finish cutting. Okay, so I just cut all the way around, and literally it took like two minutes to cut all the way around here, and this whole assembly just drops right out. And if you look on the edge, you can see that little line there. Here, I'll pull this down. <laughs> I apologize for the movement. But right here, there's just that little line, and that's what I just cut with my knife, and it was molded right into the machine. So now what i got to do is i got to remove this housing um, from the motor. i got to separate the, the electric motor from this housing. And all that you do to do that is just these two bolts on the back of the motor. So just go ahead, find a socket that fits that, and separate it apart. Okay, so all you got to do is, I just used my long extension on my handheld ratchet here, and I just turn that and loosen these up until they're all the way out. Now, to get it loose, you're going to put a hand on both sides, put your fingers under the flange here, and push it with your thumb, and if you do that on both sides at the same time, it just pops right up. And uh, let me show you, see if I can stand this up where it will stay put here. So I just take both halves of this, put my thumbs on the, now leaving the nuts at the top of the run here, so i got something to push against, and I just push down with that. You can see it's prying up, and now I can get my fingers in between here, and I just push the rest of the way. Uh, housing up, which is easier said than done. It's a little bit of work. You got to work at it, but the whole thing just pops right on out. There we go. And so here's the old motor, which is not functional. And then here's the housing, and uh, it's actually designed for this right from the factory. If you look, there's grooves. A little hard to see here. Let's see if we can light that up a little better. There's actually grooves right here for the prongs to slide right through. The whole thing is designed so it can be fixed this way. And so literally, you've got the cup here. Here's your new motor, okay, which spins a whole lot better than the other one did. And you just line this all right back up again. Make sure that, that your connector here will fit into the housing for it, right there where my thumb is. And the whole thing just slides right back down. You gotta make sure you line it up, and it just slides right back down, right over the top of the bolts. You just squeeze it back down, the bolts pop right through, just like that. 
you put the screws, the bolts back on, or the nuts back on the little studs there, tighten them down, and we'll be ready to reinstall. Okay, now the last step here then in the reassembly before we put it in the dash is uh, I've got those two nuts on the studs and I've gone and I've tightened that down and of course I'm trying to do it one handed so it doesn't work super well but um, gotta make sure I finish tightening that one down but you tighten those down and make sure it's all snug and double check and make sure that your wiring plugs are lined up properly inside here and you can see that I'm not quite there yet which is why I have to con continue to finish tightening this down but I want to get that tightened down and make sure that those plugs are sitting in the right location otherwise clearly you're not done and you want to get those snugged all the way up otherwise the plug won't go together so I need to just finish pressing that together and tightening those down but I want to show you this it's somewhere between genius and stupidity and I'm not really sure which um, so you have this bracket and if you look at the bracket you will see and this comes with the with the electric the new motor the new blower motor is there are two sets of holes there's an outer set which has five one two three four five holes in it that's going to attach underneath the dash and then there's the inner set one two three holes on there which correspond to the housing one two on the far side and then three over here and so it was actually molded in one piece to the dash it was all the whole thing is assembled all in one piece they put the motor in it before it goes into the car, and then they raise the whole thing into place, and boom, it's all assembled. I'm sure that this is some sort of a time and money-saving thing from GM, so they can get through the process. But when they're in the repair, it actually comes with this uh, piece here, and so now it is keyed. You got to make sure you get it in the right spot, um, and sometimes that can be a little bit tricky because you got to get all the pins lined up. So there's a pin here, there's a pin here, and there's a little bump out. Right there, and that guy's got to be in the right spot. If you got this flipped upside down, it won't line up, and you'll get real frustrated. So make sure that's in the right spot. And now you, the kit comes with self tappers, and you just put in the three self tappers here. Again, this has never been threaded because it was from the factory; it was just molded that way. And then um, once that's once you put those three in, then you're ready to put the whole thing up inside the car. So I have to rewind a little bit, finish tightening this down, make sure that those that plug lines up, and then I can attach my my bracket and we'll be ready to install it okay so as you can see um, I've got one screw started here and it's down most of the way I've got one started here and they're just self tappers you just drive them in I like to use a screwdriver attachment better than a socket head I just find it's easier for getting them straight and so here's my last one before I get it tight I want to make sure I get them all started because they're real bare if you get them started uh, if you you know drive the other ones tight before you started all of them because if it's not lined up right it's going to fight you the whole way down so I like to get all three of them started first you can see I'm just ratcheting this right on down there and then I can tighten them all up now that I've got them all started and almost in place all three of them get them all nice and tight that's going to be key, no doubt about it. So get them nice and tight. You don't want that bad boy coming loose on you. Because it'll rattle. And just make a bunch of racket. Now, also in included with your kit is going to be this gasket set. And it's pretty simple. It's just a self-adhesive piece of butyl here. But um, it says, of course, to put it on the top. So remember, you got to flip this over in order to get it on the top because you're going to seal that closed again so you're going to put this seal on right here all the way around and then it'll come back and join itself at the end and this is you're going to squirm this up in between right in that little opening that you where you cut you're going to squeeze this in there this uh, butyl strip and it'll it'll seal all the air and make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to so the next step next step for me I just peel that off and I don't usually peel the whole thing, I peel just a little bit, but I just want to work my way around with this, all the way around the motor. I'm keeping it right down by where I cut, just above that little strip there, you can kind of see where the cut mark is. I want it just above that, because that way I can get a good 
seal. I don't want to be on it because if I'm on it, it's going to be uneven. It's going to stick up and it's going to be hard to get up into place. And then you can see as I'm peeling this as I go, and I just go all the way around and finish that up. So once I get all the way around, you can see I've got a little bit of extra here. So I'm just going to cut that extra off with my knife. And of course, you know, you can always, they say measure twice, cut once. My, bet, my better idea is just don't have to measure at all. That thing's kind of like a little booger on here, and I just don't want to come off for nothing. There we go. And then, like that. And that way you don't have to cut anything. It's all perfectly lined up. And we've got a good seal ready to go. Now we're ready to put this right back up under the dash. Okay, so we're just about done. Now, um, this is where I get hate mail because I didn't show you how I lifted it up in there, but it's pretty unglorious. I just hold this up with one hand and then just get these started with my other hand. Um, but now I've got four of them started, and so I'm ready to put the fifth one in place. So I just bring this up and uh, pop that bad boy right up in there. And then just start turning it like you would any other screw. They're self-tapping and they go right into place. They do a nice job actually of popping right up in there. And um, it's easier with two hands, one hand pushing up and the other hand twisting. But you can see the basics of how this works. And I've been trying to just get it kind of snug. You can see that uh, that's not all the way up over on that side. You can still see the butyl gasket. And so um, now as I start to get this final one in place, again, I try not to tighten things down all the way one screw at a time. I find that to be uh, a good way to bend things. It's a good way to mess stuff up. Like if you've ever done, um, you know, a set of uh, heads or you've ever done even just uh, valve cover gaskets, you know, if you, if you tighten them all one at a time and you go all the way from zero to tight, um, you're going to bend something for sure. And so typically you want to try and keep it all kind of level. So you torque it down to a certain point, whatever that is, and, and whether that's an imaginary number for you or whether that's an absolute, you know, you're using a torque wrench to figure out what that amount is. But just work your way tighter, and especially on something like this, um, you know, you want to try and just get them all around the same tightness, just ease it down. That'll keep that seal in place for you a lot better rather than if you're putting them just all one side all the way down, you're going to bend it, this ring and then uh, nothing's going to want to sit quite right. You're going to have probably a gap uh, where the blower won't be as effective as it ought to be and, and so on. Once you get that tightened down, just reconnect this, snap that cover back into place and you're in business. So I hope that this has been real helpful to you guys. You know, I was just signing off with you guys in the last video, and I said, you know what? Let's give this thing the acid test. So come over here, turn your key on, and make sure you got it set somewhere it'll blow, and yeah, buddy, here she goes. That's a good day right there. So again, hey, we just snap that cover right back up into place on there, it's easy peasy. Just those three snaps, make sure the wiring harness is in the right place, keeping it out of the way. And uh, you're in good shape, man, and I'm set for another 100,000 miles. So, hey, you guys have a great day. Again, God bless. Stay safe out there. And uh, in this case, hey, stay comfortable, too. See you guys later.